Games to look out for and play in the month of August. It's a pretty insane question, actually. There are so many games, an utter deluge. Today, I've got for you the best 25. From indie games to AAAs, live services, niche titles, there's a whole lot to love here. So, let me know what games you're hyped about down in those comments. And with that said, let's go. Staying vaguely chronologically, we've got Baldur's Gate 3 from Larian Studios coming out to PC August 3rd, releasing from Early Access, unless of course you're in PS5, in which case you need to wait a month until September 6th. And this one's been making waves, described really as a generational game, bringing the legacy of the whole series to bear, as well as everything that Larian have learned from doing two whole Divinity games, including even co-op play. And even then, they have spent the last three years refining all all of that vision within Early Access, and the result of this is a game that is absurdly exciting, that is absolutely vast in its scale, an old-school CRPG, but one that has all the bells and whistles of a modern cinematic role-playing game, and while resurrecting Baldur's Gate as a series. Utterly incredible, and one game that will give you easily more than a month worth of play. Releasing in the seventh then, we see a unique narrative game, Videoverse, from indie dev Komaku, and it's an odd one. It is inspired by memories of navigating the Miiverse and retro instant messaging services. You're essentially diving into nostalgic forum culture, trying to navigate the conflicts and petty dramas that made that era so memorable, all in a game that is diving into what the hell happens when humans get access to the internet. WrestleQuest. WrestleQuest is on the 8th. It's from MegaCat Studios. It's a very different approach to the squared circle than the WWE or AEW have brought so far in that it's a role-playing game that's not just wrestling themed, but it's a full fantasy wrestling RPG where you're building up your moves, meeting superstars, stunting on them, and all in a sumptuously rendered pixel style. Sticking with pixels, we have 30XX, and this is an exciting one. It's leaving early access on the 9th. It's a Mega Man style action platformer with the added wrinkle of the 2D stages actually being part of a rogue-like structure. It's got full co-op and being an early access game, we already know that it is rated very positively on Steam, so this is absolutely worth watching. Overwatch 2. I do have to have it in today's video because, yes, it does have a major release on the 10th. Steam. Overwatch 2 will be on Steam, opening up to the widest audience in PC gaming and just in time for the Invasion DLC to be available for 15 of your hard-earned United States dollars. Of course, the early reports are that the paid missions are fine. Maybe not much to write home about, and perhaps not with a humongous amount of replayability. At the very least, we'll know whether it's worth putting money into or not, and an added benefit for everybody involved is we'll get to see the Steam user review score, which at the very least will be an amusing thing. Sometimes less so if you're a developer. Thankfully, I can say that our game, The Pale Beyond, is currently 91% in Steam. It was 97 from recents, and... It's 25% off right now, actually. So if you want to check out The Pale Beyond now is literally the best time to do it, as we just dropped our epilogues, which is a big free update that adds a whole bunch of epilogues to all of the core cast members that is very reactive to the choices that you make and the ending branches that you go on. You can check out The Pale Beyond on Steam. Continuing on with the 10th, we've got Atlas Fallen. This is from Deck 13 Interactive. You might not know their name. You perhaps might remember Lords of the Fallen, which was them trying to do the whole Souls-like thing, and then The Surge and The Surge 2, which actually did find quite a dedicated little fan base. So now they have a third-person character action RPG with yet more optional co-op that does seem to bring forward everything that they've learned about having a cool-looking, uh, player-driven combat design. It may be a good example of a double-A sort of dark horse that could surprise people at release. Okay, also in the 10th, we have got Stray Gods, the role-playing musical. And this is one that actually comes from, as an example, the talents of David Gator of Dragon Age fame and some other pedigree too. It's essentially a musical narrative role-playing game with a beautiful comic book inspired 2D art style, a stellar voice and musical cast. And if you enjoyed the likes of Hades, this is yet another game that is remixing Greek pantheon mythology, which, uh, hey, is always fun and sometimes pretty horny. And also in the 10th, we've got Stray coming over to Xbox. It's a great little game, fun puzzle platformer, looks quite nice too, so you can check that out. 
Moving on to the 11th, we've got a film, but it's a game adjacent one in the form of Gran Turismo. It, of course, is blasting in its marketing that this is the kind of thing that actually did happen. And that's because it's based off the story of a guy called Yan, who actually did win the GT Academy in 2011, only to graduate from racing sims to the real thing. Now, when he did that, he didn't have David Harbour and Orlando Bloom by his side, but in the movie, seemingly they are there. Overall, though, it's a movie that I will say is oddly endearing because it doesn't seem to be ashamed that it's actually about video games. So I suppose in that, good luck to them. As we move on to the 15th, we see the developers of Warframe team up with Airship Syndicate to release their new action fantasy MMO Wayfinder. It's launching into early access, and it's far closer to a third-person action game than it is anything like a Warcraft, with character and weapon choice very much driving your gameplay style. Now, the initial previews for this actually have been quite promising, and given the publisher's history, I think this could certainly go places. The idea of being able to get into a game like this on the ground floor is at least appealing to me in a world where I look at Warframe and then I get a bit of a headache because there is just so much to it. Okay, pretty exciting one then. But also in the 15th, we've got Moving Out 2. This is a sequel. It's a whole new town of people who need help relocating their earthly goods and up to four players who are trying their best not to absolutely break everything. This is essentially a moving game, but in the vein of Overcooked, right? fun way to test your friendships, and having relatively recently played through all of Overcooked and Overcooked 2, I wholeheartedly recommend this type of game as uh, an experience in a world where, at least I'm mazed by World of Warcraft, many of you are probably mazed by Diablo or Path of Exile or whatever, it can be quite nice to play a game that is just fun chaos without all the numbers. But sticking with the number 15, also in the 15th, we've got Hammerwatch 2 from Crankshell. This is the sequel to the cult 2013 hit, and it continues the classically inspired hack and slash gameplay of the first, with updated graphics, more environments and quests to choose from in the overworld. It's got a gauntlet-esque arcade feeling extending to the big potential of four-player co-op and modding support, so I think that this actually is one that can stand out in a world where we've all been reminded just how fun action RPG combat can be. The next day in the 16th, we've got something that looks really awesome. It was one of the most popular games in the recent Steam Next Fest. It is On Guard. It's the first showing from Fireplace Games. Bright, colorful, third-person, sword-fighting, swashbuckler, you know, Zorro, Errol Flynn, Puss in Boots, Musketeers, all of that is being wrapped up into this experience. It's got a focus on using your environment against your foes. It's a tightly focused game that therefore does seem to have a very high chance at delivering that promised gameplay fantasy. And I mean, hey, it was very popular in Steam Next Fest because people played it and enjoyed it, which is a good sign. One day later then, Shadow Gambit The Cursed Crew. This is a pirate-themed stealth strategy game that is part of the wider strategy revival I think we've been seeing in recent years, where you are using your supernatural pirate crew to attempt to pull off heists and survive in the lost Caribbean in an alternative supernatural age of piracy. That all just seems really fun to me. So again, I think it is a game that is worthy of the highlight that you should check out. Moving on to the 18th, two games you'll care about, one you won't. Madden NFL 24 comes out. But more importantly, two other games do. We have an asymmetric multiplayer horror game, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from Gun Interactive, that will hopefully have a better life as a licensed game than their previous entry, Friday the 13th, which had a very dedicated community, but was then cursed with licensing problems that resulted in the game being delisted in 2023. So hopefully this game actually gets to survive. Continuing with the day though, we have got Bomb Rush Cyberfunk from Team Rep and it essentially is a spiritual successor to the Jet Set Radio series. So you'll be using your skates, bikes, and boards to navigate a cell-shaded city, tagging graffiti and doing combos as you avoid the attention of the police and uncover a conspiracy behind the city, of course, with a big, big soundtrack. Yeah, I mean, hey, Jet Set Radio spiritual successors, I don't think we can say too much bad about that. But on the 22nd, you will finally get your opportunity to fight the Ever War in Immortals of Avium. 
I don't know why, but it does just to me feel like the biggest, most like triple A, triple A for the sake of triple A that we've seen. It's strange. It's the latest EA original, a game led by ex Call of Duty developers. It's very much an answer to the question of why are there no more triple A single player FPSs anymore? Uh, with a single player campaign and a shockingly high number of proper nouns being dropped in every single trailer, this does seem to be the sort of thing that is very over serious but maybe people will like it. We just can't quite tell yet because all of the proper noun overload and over seriousness can either manage to be pitch perfect or completely fall over and be a flop. We'll see. I'm not holding up too much hope. Continuing with the 22nd though, we've got another science fiction horror title. I initially thought it would be a little bit more like a Dead Space-ish experience. It doesn't actually seem to be like that. Uh, no, the game is Fort Solace from Fallen Leaf and Black Drakkar Games. We know a hell of a lot about the voice cast, you know, Roger Clark, Troy Baker. We don't know as much about the gameplay, but it does appear to be a science fiction horror title that does fit the indie narrative adventure mold. What we do know, though, is that this game is designed to be broken up into television-style narrative chapters of play, with the option to binge the whole thing from the get-go if you're impatient. It does seem like a bizarre conceit, but that being said, I do have a special place in my heart for science fiction horror, so yes, it does get to be in today's video. It's one that I will be watching with interest. And to stick with horror, but in a different style, we have Blasphemous 2 from The Game Kitchen on the 24th, and this is really worthy of note because it's a sequel to a very hyper-successful Metroidvania that, uh, well, is absolutely gorgeous, very much inspired by a lot of religious imagery, but it's taking the action out of the first game's castle and into a whole new set of locales. Very much a classic sequel in that sense, but if the gameplay and the style remain anywhere near as good as the first one, this absolutely will be a game that you should consider picking up. Now, of course, on the 25th, we have Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon from From Software. Yeah, they're going back to robots after many, many years. Gigantic mech suits that move like ballerinas as they fight level-sized bosses and humongous swarms of enemies. It absolutely is not a Souls game in how it plays. It's the first Armored Core in 10 years. I think this is nearly guaranteed to be a success because of the strength of From's name alone. Most previews are quite strong. Many are glowing. I think this will probably get quite a few more people into mechs and into the Armored Core series. Now, on the 29th, we've got two noteworthy indies, Goodbye Volcano High and Sea of Stars. Goodbye Volcano High is a dinosaur-themed narrative coming-of-age game that asks the age-old question, if you've just resolved your teenage angst as the world is about to end by a big asteroid, what's the most important thing for you to do next? So expect drama, angst, rhythm games, and soul-searching when this game finally releases, which has actually been after a few delays. Then, Sea of Stars, that is from the studio that made The Messenger. The Messenger is an absolutely fantastic game. In this case, Sea of Stars is taking aim at Chrono Trigger and Square Enix's 16-bit era. And this means that if Sea of Stars is even half as inventive and impressive as The Messenger, this is going to be a truly special game, one that is handmade for classic RPG fans, so I think it should be on your radar. And finally, on the 31st, we have Trine 5. Yep, they're still making the Trine games, and this one, The Clockwork Conspiracy, is ending the month. Trine, of course, is a series of very tenured co-op puzzle platformers, and after a brief experimentation with having movement in the third dimension, they went back to their 2D roots, and I think it's just interesting to see the series continue. They have chosen their craft, and at this stage, it is very finely honed indeed. As you can see then, August is an absolutely crammed month. I think what I'm going to do is probably dabble in Baldur's Gate 3. I'm almost certainly going to be playing Armored Core 6. I think On Guard and a lot of games are just definitionally going to have to go into my backlog. Even right now, I'm playing The Remnant 2, and I just have the problem of there being too many goddamn great video games to play. For some perspective from our team then, from Connor, who's leading writing our videos, for him, it's basically just getting lost in Baldur's Gate 3 for most of the month. Um, should note, though, 
everyone here like we do have a friend who's on the development team of Baldur gate 3 uh connell's old housemate i've got plastered with him many times he makes developer tools um on that game so that does mean that there's a bit of a uh you know there's there's a personal angle i suppose to a lot of us being excited about Baldur's gate but of course i love the rpg genre and this does seem to be one of those games that is a unique intersection of uh scale of experience and then via early access a funding model that has allowed for seemingly unparalleled scale and iteration on the game experience and that's why i think this could truly be one of those games that only really comes around once a decade continue on with some notes for our team for connell falling into overwatch again was uh potentially a mistake and i would know because i also fell into that game at roughly the same time that problem of oh no the game's fun as the developers made it but everything swirling around it is actually quite disappointing and not particularly great. Mmm, kind of unfortunate. For Matt then, Armored Core, I mean, obviously, it's Matt, it's a FromSoft game, also, it's an Armored Core game, so he's he's going to need help for this month. I mean, even having Sea of Stars, um, given how much he played The Messenger, yeah, there are just too many games. And the crazy thing here, to draw this all to a close, is we're only just getting started. You know what September, October, and November are like for releases of video games. It's in the same way that even February and March became the new November as delayed games happened to come out then. It truly is a crazy time to be covering this industry. And as much as there are a lot of negative stories and things to perhaps worry about or struggle back against, videos like this prove that there is a humongous amount of innovation, craft, and amazing experiences to be had in our industry. So go check them out. I hope you found this video to be informative, useful, and enjoyable. And if you've got any personal picks, let me know down below. That's it for me. If you want to support us, you can check out our game, The Pale Beyond, which is currently 25% off. And you can check out store.bellular.games if you'd like to see any of the collector's edition goodies that we made to celebrate our new epilogue DLC, like our vinyl release and our art book. That's it for me. Have a great day. See you next time.